and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where don't adjust your screens. I know that the puzzle on the screen is yesterday's puzzle, and that is because Mark, in his infinite wisdom, um, has recommended me a puzzle today that he wants me to open live on camera, which I'm very happy to do. And normally that means that this puzzle will be in some way mad looking or have mad rules. Um, so let me just copy and paste this into the browser and we shall see together what we've got going on. And we have got a very, very sparse grid that's small, eight by eight. Self to, ah, ah, no, no, no. I do not want to do this song. <laughs> no, 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 no. Self-determination by Stefan Bura, this puzzle. And I, I know something about this puzzle because it's been requested a lot. And I had a look at it, um, not recently, but a couple of weeks ago on Logic Masters Germany and hardly anyone had solved it. It was like, it like had one solve or something. It was some absurdly low number of solves. It was unrated because nobody had solved it. And um, I think I've even read the rules of this before and I didn't understand it. So, I mean, let me let me just do that for you. Um, place the digits one to eight in each row and each column. Uh, yeah, OK, there's no boxes. So we can't do anything with boxes here. Each horizontal domino that has both its digits. What? Each horizontal domino that has both its digits in the first seven columns forms the coordinates of a digit in the grid. What? The leftmost member of the pair is its row. The rightmost member of the pair is its column. And its value is the row in which the pair is. I mean, that is gobbledygook. What does that mean? For, oh, there's an example. For instance, if row four, column one contains a seven, well, it now does. And row four, column two contains a five. Um, then row seven, column five contains a four. What? Why? The right, hang on. If each horizontal domino, <laughs> so I'm sorry, I keep going over this, but this is going to, I'm going to turn this off in a minute anyway. Each horizontal domino that has both its digits in the first seven columns forms the coordinates of a digit. The leftmost member is the, it must be that digits, oh, I see. So it's saying that, oh, I see, right. So this is a seven, five. We can view this as the coordinates, row seven, column five. That's how, that's how to think about that. So in row seven, column five, you write four apparently, because that is, that's the, oh, I see, that's the row number in which this seven, five appears. It appears in the fourth row. But, but <laughs> how is that solvable from that? That is, well, I tell you what, Stefan, that's very clever. It, it is mental that this exists as a puzzle. I will totally give you that. But how one is meant to solve it? it I mean, it's just not, what is Mark thinking? It's just not suitable for a video, Mark. It's just not. Because you can't, this is something you take on holiday with you and you have it by the side of the pool and you look at it occasionally and sort of just shake your head and go back to drinking your mojito. And, you know, maybe at the end of two weeks, you have some sort of thought that allows you to make some sort of progress so that in six months time, you might be able to solve this puzzle. This is not suitable for a Thursday afternoon at three o'clock when I've got to get a puzzle out by 8.30. It's just... It's... It's just not. <laughs> oh, my. I'll do the birthdays. Um, happy birthday, Maud. This will put me in a better mood. I like doing the birthdays. Happy birthday, Maud, from Tony. Um, Tony says you love cracking the cryptic. Well, so do I, except on days like this. Um, and that you're French. And that you like Aikido, which I think it, I think is a martial art. Um, 
I don't know much about Aikido, but I do know that I hope you have a great birthday with lots of cake. Molly, your boyfriend Sam wrote to us and says you're a big fan. I hope you have a brilliant birthday. Roberta, your partners, uh, Vincenzo and Daniele wrote to us and I hope that you have a brilliant birthday. And Rosie, from your husband Patrick in Munich, one of my favourite cities in the world, I hope you have a brilliant birthday. I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I used to have to go to Munich occasionally with work. And the best part of the trip was when I wasn't doing the work when I was in Munich. Uh, and I did several wonderful cycling trips uh, in the Bavarian Alps. So, so beautiful. Um, I have been to Oktoberfest a few times as well. Um, yeah, great place. Um, I'm sort of, I don't really know whether to continue this. It feels like um, a bit of a time waste. Um, so we're streaming tonight at 10 o'clock in theory, if I have, if I finish this puzzle by then. Um, and we're streaming more of our 500,000 subscriber special app. That's free. Download it. Do the puzzles. They're magnificent. Um, and yeah, uh, I will be having stern works with Mark on the stream. And Oh, oh yeah, keep up the suggestions for the next puzzle you want Mark and I to solve collaboratively on Patreon. And I've got a suggestion. What about this one, Mark? You can take the lead because I have not got a clue. I mean, I, mean, I, will, I will say this. That is, I think, the most daunting rule set combined with grid I have ever seen on the channel. I mean, the miracle Sudoku, at least I could see that you could restrict some cells quite quickly. I could see quite quickly you could do that. But this, I hardly understand the rules. And from what I do understand about them, I have absolutely no idea how this can solve, let alone uniquely. And, and what, what I find even more baffling when I think about it is how... Does a human being, Stefan, I'm looking at you, how do you have the idea for this? How does it occur to you that this could have a solution? I mean, it just, it, is, it boggles my mind. I've spent seven minutes complaining, haven't I? I'm so sorry. Um, right, uh, do have a go, oh, do have a go at this. If you've got a spare six months, um, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm desperately looking at my list of things to see whether or not I can, um, I can talk about other things. Alexa's turned on. Um, anyway, let's get cracking. Um, and self determination is that some sort of clue as to how I meant to solve this. Each domino, each horizontal domino, and it's only the first seven columns of the grid, isn't it? So that's those. So these digits, well, those, well, each, each domino within this pattern. So there are actually quite a lot of dominoes in this pattern. Point at digits. I don't even, is this somehow, is this what I'm meant to do? Use the one in the grid. I don't, I can't, can't even in my mind articulate what this one is telling me. This one is telling me that it's telling me something about eights, is it? Because it's in the eighth row. It's in the eighth row, which, so it's, yes, okay, so it is telling me about eights. It's telling me that, well, it depends which domino we look at, because this, this is, one is part of a domino that points at, well, it depends what that digit is. Oh, this is mental, this is absolutely mental. Um, let's make this a three. If that's a three, and it doesn't need to be, but if it's a three, that's saying that there's, an eight there, I think. Row three, column one is an eight. But depending on what this digit is, let's make that a two, that's saying that row one, column two, row one, column two is an eight. And then 
the eights are telling us well then well then they're part of dominoes aren't they oh maybe i've got to look at this the other way around is it what's pointing at the one i've got to think about so the the what's that saying so the okay so the one is being pointed at by row one isn't it row one is telling us about where ones go in the grid so to signal this digit i've got to say it's in the eighth row in the fourth column right so there is an eight four pair in this row and oh uh, nah, no that or is there because couldn't Oh, hang on now I'm really confused no there well there might be I think there only might be because there might be there might be an 8-4 pair or well, it doesn't even have to be an 8-4 pair but then that does that digit have to be have to be signaled or not how many dominoes are there in the grid altogether then that we're actually able to make use of so that that's a domino that will count that's a domino so one two three four five six and there are eight rows so there are 48 48 dominoes now do the dominoes always point to different cells Let's just put a digit in there. Let's make that a seven. So could I point at this seven with two different dominoes? The seven, I have to point, well, this digit must be indexed from row seven, mustn't it? So in it's OIC, no, that doesn't, right, okay. So there, right, each domino points at one cell. I've finally figured that out because whatever this is, I've made it a seven, but it's going to be indexed from row seven. And this is in row three, column five. So I'd have to go three, five. And then I couldn't do that again in this row because that's going to break the rule that I'm not allowed to repeat digits. And I can't, I can't indicate a seven any other way, can I? Let me just read the rules again. Each horizontal domino that has both its digits in the first seven columns forms the coordinates of a digit blah 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 its value is the row in which yeah so if i had a three five in this row in fact that would be impossible because that would be saying this digit was a schrodinger cell it was simultaneously a seven and it was a four and that would be you can't really do that very well that will not work so actually there are unique dominoes in the grid there are and there are, well and there are 48 of them so there are 48 unique dominoes and there are 64 cells in the puzzle so there are 16 cells in this puzzle that are not that are not indexed by dominoes or at least not counting dominoes. They're not indexed in purple. They, but they could still be indexed by that domino, for example. It's just that we wouldn't have to count that. So that... What on earth? What on earth? I mean... So there are 16... 16 cells that are not able to be indexed so each one of these each one of these dominoes points at a cell So maybe I've got to assume then that this is so 
So if this if this is pointed at by by a domino in purple, that purple has to be up here, and it has to be a four. No, it has to be an eight and then a four. So let's put eight and four in here. Eight four. So if this is eight four pointing at this, then row eight column four is a one, but the eight has to be. Yeah, okay. Ah, in fact, oh, <laughs> okay. This is not right. Well, this particular thing is not right. I can let me just correct this. Well, when I say correct it, I mean at least give it a chance of being correct. I've moved this across um, because I think if the eight four was here, the problem there is that this one, this one is part of two dominoes. It's part of that domino, which is telling us where the eight goes in column one and it's part of this domino which is telling us where eight goes in row one because this is row one and then the column in which the eight appears now when i put the eight there it was in the fourth column so i got a four there and a four there which won't work but i've moved it across now so now i think that's a five so now Yeah, okay, so does this sort of iterate is what I'm wondering. So, uh, you know, as you add digits, do you, can you just keep going until you've sort of hit the edges of the, uh, hit the edges of the grid? So if you, if, if the eight four was here and this was one five, can I now use this four or this five somehow to make more progress? So if this four, must be indicated by the four in the, well I say it must be it must it, it needn't actually it could this four could be one of the the cells in the puzzle that's not indexed by a purple domino but let's imagine it is then in this row there would be a row one column six there would be a 16 um, let's put 16 in let's say it's there and then That would be a 16. But then, then the one here should or could be or would be have to be indexed by this because this is pointing at the fourth row. So we need to, this domino here is saying where the one goes in row four of the grid, which is now in row four, column one. So these sort of pair off, don't they? One, five. Yeah, they do. Okay. So this, this, this row, this is pointing at row eight, column four, which is here. And this points back at row eight, row one, column five. So, but the, so there is, there is sort of a mutuality between coordinates where they where they live within purple they point at each other and they pair off but the problem not the problem a problem of the multitude the myriad the plethora of problems that exist in this puzzle the problem is that there's nothing to say actually that this 84 has to be in purple at all this could be this could be a digit that is not pointed at one of the 16 digits that's not pointed at or if the, if it is pointed at does it have to reciprocate i think it has to reciprocate if it is pointed at if it's pointed at by a purple because this is this is in purple as well and that domino is entirely within purple it must point back at its friend so there's sort of a you you effect going on but this is not helping me unfortunately to solve the puzzle it's just um it's just a thing that is true so presumably 
I want to say there must be some magic about these dominoes that don't. So these dominoes on the right, well, they, they, oh no, hang on, no, this is not right. So what I was going to say is that I've got, I've got 48 dominoes that point at cells all around the grid. And when they point at cells that are are in purple dominoes, those purple dominoes will point back at them. But they don't have to point at those. They don't have to point at those. Let me just think about it. What's that, that digit? Let's make that digit seven. So that's the seventh row is where a digit would point to this. So and that's in row three, column eight. So if there was a three, eight pair here, that would point at this and tell, and tell us that this was a seven. But this is not part of a domino that needs to point back over here. So the trail just instantly runs cold and the puzzle is this puzzle is impossible that's why no one solved it it's because it's basically impossible i don't know why i'm looking at the instructions okay um so so I, if there's a 4-8 in the top of the grid, in purple, then there will be a 1 and something which is the column of the 8 in row 9. So how on earth do I do this then? What am I meant to think about? I don't actually feel I've had an intelligent thought in the last 22 minutes. I literally feel like I've not had an intelligent thought. Right, okay, there is an intelligent thought. Oh, my phone is buzzing at me. I just I just read the headline then just to check that there was no nothing too dastardly going on. The news is thoroughly depressing at the moment, so I suggest we all spend time in cracking the cryptic land. Um, the oh yeah, my intelligent thought. What was it? Yes, I had an intelligent thought, and that thought is that there are well these cells. It occurs to me must be in the. There are 16 cells in this puzzle that are not not pointed at by dominoes and they must include these cells. And the reason for that is very simple. If you try and point at this cell using a purple coordinate, what digits, uh, what, what coordinate is this? Well, it's in, the problem is it's in row three, column three. So it would be double three, this would be double four, this would be double five. So that doesn't work. So none of these digits is pointed at by a purple domino. Now that means we've now got 48 purple dominoes or cells pointed at by purple dominoes. We've got eight yellow cells. So we're at 56. So there are only eight more cells in this puzzle that are not able to be pointed at by dominoes. Now imagine, I bet you it's these. No, actually that ooh, that, no, that would be in both of those sets, so that wouldn't make the count work. Uh, no, I, I'm not sure it's those anyway. I just wondered whether for some reason you couldn't... Let me just think about that again. What about, are we gonna try and point at that? So this is saying where the eight goes. So we're looking at the eighth row row three column so we need to put row three column eight down here so three and eight no there's no reason that couldn't be pointed at is there i don't see i'm i'm worried 
that there is some meta idea here that you have to appreciate like oh to solve this puzzle you know you need you need to establish a certain number of givens or something and therefore you can extrapolate from that that it's not possible to have more than you know you know seven gaps or something in this column <laughs> um and if if it's something like that i'm literally never going to get it i'm literally never going to get it Just, right so i can i can tell you one more tiny little thing <laughs> which fo follows from the fact that this diagonal can't can't be pointed at by a domino and that's that that cell for example can't be it can't be a one because if that's a one the only way of pointing at this cell is remember ones are in indexed from row one of the grid so we would have to go row one column one is there so similarly that can't be a two because that's in row and then you'd have to go two here so within the parameters of the yellow digits the yellow digits cannot contain their row or column number which is just the corollary of what we were saying before. It's just a very small extension, at least in my brain. Ah. Ah, hang on. Hang on a minute, how could... Now I've had another intelligent thought, perhaps. If that... I'm just thinking about reciprocity. So when we were doing the examples with the eights and the fours down here, we, we saw how they pointed at each other. So, but, but these can't be involved in reciprocity because you can't point at the yellow digits from a purple digit. So what I'm wondering is what happens if the per if, if a yellow digit because all yeah these dominoes all count they they are real dominoes in the context of the puzzle so what if they point at purple how could purple point back at them oh this could be this could be it this could be it this is very exciting actually let me to right let's just make this square an eight um no i want to do it i want to <laughs> see it shows how little i've understood the rules i'm going to make this a, a lower digit than that i'm going to make it a four so the fours are are hinted at by row four of the grid so this if it was if it was pointing at a purple domino here this purple domino will use that to make that so if this purple domino was pointing at this cell it would be row seven column two it would be a seven and a two but now surely this needs to point back here because this domino is telling us where the f where, where the seven goes which we've just placed in row four so it would and, and we know that we can't do that because we'd have to go double four And that must always be the case, mustn't it? You can't, you, yeah. What, what, we're, what, what we can say is because you can never have a domino pointing at yellow, the yellow dominoes can't point, they cannot point at a domino that would need to point back at them, i.e. they can't point into purple, or at least uh, no it's still not it's still not quite clear to me actually because I don't think I think it's certainly true to say they can't point into purple but what it 
well, a purple domino. But couldn't they point into, like, column 7? Because that domino doesn't have to, doesn't have reciprocity. That's not a domino that's a coordinate for the purposes of the puzzle. So, I'm not quite sure I've, I've understood this. I'm actually going to do another example just to try and get my head around this a bit more, if that's all right. Um, and I apologise to those of you who are now yelling at your screen saying, you should understand this. I don't understand it. I'm sorry. Um, now, let's try and make... I want to point at something that's in purple. So though that domino is in purple. Um, so, and then I have to decide what digit this is, don't I? So let's make that a 7, which is pointed at by row 7. Oh no, because th this, this domino doesn't count, so that's a silly choice. I'll go 2. Okay, so this is a 2. And therefore, we know 2's index from here. So this square... If this was pointing at this domino, would be an 8, row 8, column 1. But now we know that this is pointing at where the 8 goes in row 2. So it's, there, there's reciprocity, which means that has to be a 2 and it breaks. So it does break. But the problem here is what happens if we put 2 there? That's, that's in a domino that doesn't have reciprocity. So that would be in row 5, column 7. So that would be 5, that would be 7. Yeah, it's ne you see, it's nearly really beautiful, this. It's very close to being absolutely beautiful. Because if, if it was the case... That the that these these dominoes going down this diagonal always have to point outside the purple area entirely. Then what cells would they point at? They would always point into column eight. And and therefore everything on the right hand side, everything everything on the right hand side of this diagonal would be an eight. Which would be, I mean, it would be amazing because I'd get digits. But this is the problem. Is that actually, I mean, it might still be the case that we can put 7 and 8 into these squares. Which is still better. It's still, it's still a real pencil mark in this puzzle. And frankly, I'm tempted to then stop the video and say, I've, I've done well. I've done all you could have expected. Um... But yeah, this this is this is not a problem, is it? Because we go five seven here. I don't have to worry about reciprocity. Oh, hang on. Oh my gosh! I'm on, oh my good grief! Right. Wow, okay, well, how about this then? How about this? This is not, this doesn't work. Ah, oh, this is, I mean, this is crazy clever. It's crazy clever, but utterly baffling as well. Right, I'm now going to allege that you can't ever point purple you can't ever point these dominoes that begin here at anything in purple because I was thinking about this in terms of that domino, which we know is not a domino that has to point at anything in the puzzle. But what about that domino? What about that domino? Because that's what this is. is it's looking at the position of five in the second column. Well, what's that? in the second column it's in row two so that's still got to be a two 
So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which way round. It, 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 what, what I'm trying to say and articulating very poorly is that actually you can't point yellow dominoes into column seven. After all, it just doesn't work because if you try and do it, the problem is that when you, it's still part of a counting domino. If you look at the left hand side of the domino and that still results in a double digit. So this means, this means we've got digits. We've got digits in the puzzle because now we have learnt that each domino, each of these dominoes, boom, 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 boom. It gets a bit whiffy down here, doesn't it? Because that domino is not actually counted. Well, at least these six dominoes have to point they have to point at cells that don't reciprocate and therefore are white cells. And therefore, given that these are all the column digits of, of these cells we need to point at, the only white cells in the grid are in this column. So these are all eights. Da da. Um, and therefore, Therefore, what does that mean? Does that mean, does that mean I can write four in here? <laughs> that would be very nice if I could. So this row, yeah, I can, I can. That's what exactly what it means. Because this row is telling me, is telling me where the one goes in row eight. Well, that's that domino and it goes in the fourth column. So it must be that. It must be that because this domino has to has to index to something and the only thing it's allowed to index to is where the one goes in row eight. So that is eight four. And does that mean I can reciprocate it? It must do. So now this is telling me where the eight goes in row one, which is in row column two. So that's a two. And this two Is telling me where oh yeah 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 it's it's iterative oh god I'm gonna solve this I think I'm gonna solve this because now that domino is pointing at where the eight goes in row two and I know where it goes it goes in column three And therefore this domino is pointing, that domino there is pointing at where the two is in row eight and it's in column five. And then this domino is where the eight is in row three, which is in four, column four. And then this is where the three is in row eight, which is in six. So they're gonna get some sort of pattern down here, aren't we? Um, one, two, three. This is where the four is in row uh, nine, uh, row eight, which is in the seventh column. And then this is where the five is in row eight, which we don't know. Is this a five? Um, if this is a five, I know the thing is, this is not a valid domino. Uh, hang on, but that, hang on, hang on. This isn't a valid, well, that's not a valid domino, but this is a valid domino. So if I did put the five there, I'd have to put an eight there and that won't work. Two eights in the row. So the five is not there. So the five is over here somewhere. And if the five is over here somewhere, this digit yeah, so it, it breaks, let the pattern breaks. This is a one, two or a three, I think, which is sort of a bit strange. But then where the five is here 
is indexing into the eights position in this row. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. So there's a five, six. There's a six to the right of the five. So one of those is a six, I think. I've got an X wing of eights at the bottom of the grid as well. Just from I've got I've got all these eights in there. I was, I was perplexed then as to why I didn't have seven eights when I had an eight X wing left. But the reason is there are only eight eights in this puzzle because it's an eight by eight. So now, ah, that's not an eight. That's not an eight because it's a self-referencing eight. If that's an eight, what's this digit got to be? Remember that this this row is referencing the position of eight in this. So if I put eight here, the eight is in row eight, column one, and that has to be a one and there's going to be a clash. So that's lovely because that means that's not an eight. And if that's not an eight, the final eight must be here and here, which means that. Um, I don't know what that means, actually. So does that mean there has to be? Yeah. Uh, ooh, or not. So the 8 in row 7 is in the coordinates row 7 column 1. So that has to be there. So that's got to be a 7. Which means that's got to be 5 and that's got to be 6 by our earlier pencil marks. So now I've got the bottom row. <laughs> and in theory I think, well you can see I already know all the positions of 8. So it's not surprising I've got the bottom row. But, but then I can get that digit, can I? Yes, because this is the position of five in row eight. So that's in the first column. This is, oh no, hang on. This is the position of, oh, this is so confusing to me. I'm so sorry about this. Um, do I know what that digit is? is? What I'm trying to establish. I don't think I do. I might do. Four, five, six, seven, one. I want it to be a two. Why is that a two? That would be saying that the. Oh, it is a. No, no, it's not a two. I was going to say it is a two, because this is referencing the six, isn't it, in row eight, which is in column two. But that domino is not a is not a referencing domino, so I don't think that is valid as a conclusion. So, hmm, okay. But can I? Ah, uh, okay. I don't actually know. I don't even know what to think about here. This ah, uh, that domino is referencing the seven because it's in the seventh row. This well, this because this is the seventh row. It's referencing seven, and it's referencing the seven in row eight because this is the first digit in this domino, and that seven is in that cell. So that's got to be a three. Row eight, column three needs to contain a seven. Right there, you go. There's another digit. Um. And therefore, can we get this digit then? This is saying where is the 7 in row 3. And the 7 in row 3 has a multitude of places it can be, I think. So let's actually just, it can be in all of those places. So this one row, that's column 1, 2, 7 and 8. So this has, see that is interesting actually. That is a lot more restricted than I was expecting. I think it has to be a one, two, seven or eight by Sudoku. It can't be there and it can't be here by Sudoku. Now this can't be a seven or an eight by Sudoku on its own cell, which seems to suggest that this, there's a seven in one of those two cells, which means I can get rid of those sevens, which is sort of a bit exciting. 
Um, which does that do something for us? That's then indicating the position of three. So there's got to be a which, yeah, whichever one of these is true, it's got to have a two on its right hand side because this three is in the second column. So if that was a two, I'd then have a two, row two, column eight, which is that digit would have to be a three because that's the third row. This is completely mental. Uh, and I can't see why that fails. So, all right, I'm now actually less confident than I was before that I am gonna be able to solve this because this seems it still seems quite baffling <laughs> in terms of what exactly is going on. Um, right. So what's, oh, let's just think about this. This domino is pointing off the grid. So it doesn't matter what I put in here. It's pointing over here somewhere. So this digit is not going to be very useful to me, is it? So there must be something else we can do then from the digits we've managed to get. Let's start at the top. So we've got a four here, which is relevant. Well, this, this domino is telling us where the one goes in row four. And okay, there are some places I can see it can't go. So let's just put all the ones in. That can't be a one. That can't be a one. Okay, so we've got four possible positions, but this this can't be eight because that would repeat the eight. So that's not the one. So this has to, and, oh, and that can't be a one because because uh, if I put one here, that's, that's well, that's clashing. It clearly is not going to work. So actually that's got to be a two or a three. And there is a one in one of these two cells, which is more interesting than I was expecting to get. Now, Let's look at look at reciprocity again. So this is pointing at the position of four in row one, which is in the third position. So if this is a one, this has got to be a three. And if this is a one, this has got to be a three. But if that's no, no, no. <laughs> right. Okay. I've got something. Okay. Right. That is not a three for the following reason. If this is four, three, it's saying the one goes in this row four, column three, but we've just worked out that then this needs to index the position of the four, which is here. So I get two threes in the column and that won't work. That's complicated, isn't it? So that's two. I'm sure there's a quicker way of doing this now, but I don't know what it is. So I'm going to do it this way. Um, so that's now a two, which is indexing the one, which is gives us the three that we've just been talking about. So this is this is now indexing the four as being here. So that's that's entirely sensible, isn't it? And then this coordinate is telling us where the four goes in row three. So I'm now going to look at that. Uh, it seems to be able to go in those two, that one, or that one. So it can't go here because that would require this to be an eight. What about there? That would require this to be a six. What's wrong with that? Not sure, that might be possible. If it's here, no, 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 no. If it's here, that needs to be a three. It's the column, so that doesn't work. Oh, sorry, which I've already got. I was looking at the two pencil mark rather than the four pencil mark. So forgive me. I was just being slow as usual. So, okay. So if this can't, oh, and this can't be four because that would need to be one. Oh, this, this does actually sort of start to crack a little bit now, but this could be a two. Oh, no, it can't be a two. Wow. Okay. So actually we get this digit is a six. So row three, column six is a four. Now, what's that done? So row six, column four now 
has to be a 3. Row 6, column 4 has to be a 3. So in this column, I now need to put in 4 and 7, I think, into those positions. I can... Well, I've got an 8 and a 7 here. Oh, that's that digit just being referenced. I've got a 6 and an 8 here. That's row 6. Column 8 needs to be a 4, which is there. That's a new digit. I haven't had that one before, but that one doesn't help, that one doesn't help me. So how many 4s have we got? Not that many. Bother, 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 bother. Um, hmm. Okay. So now I'm, I've totally got no idea where to look. Is it this row? Uh, or can we do more with our fours? We could argue that. Um, hmm. How many? Are, I've got lots of eight. I've got quite a lot of threes as well, actually. Let me just double click three, see if I can see anything there. What's... What's this indexing? This is indexing the position of five. Five. So if this was, what digit could that be? If that was a two, that would be saying that that's, oh, it's not a two. If it's a three, it's saying that's a five. If it's a four, it's saying, okay, yeah, that's that's probably not a helpful place to look, is it? Um, okay, I think I'm going to check this row then, where I've got to put two, four, and five in, and that can't be four. Oh, oh, it's as simple as that, is it? Where does four go in this row? It's got to go here. That's massive. Oh, it's nearly massive, but unfortunately, four and one are self-referential. So I don't get an extra digit as a result of getting this four, which is rather unfortunate. What about, ah, yes, okay, I do get more digits. This can't, this can't be seven two, because if that's seven two, that's looking at that cell and requiring it to be a four. This is the fourth row. So that's got to be five, that's got to be two. And in row seven, that digit is now a four, which means that's a four and that's a seven. That's huge. Now I've got a seven four pair here. Oh, which is self-referential. Ah! Um, oh, that was nearly, really exciting. Okay. Now, I'm trying to see if there are some sort of weakish Sudoku digits. There are quite a few digits here that are moderately restricted, aren't there? Just by our old friend Sudoku. I'm just trying to decide which one of these I want to use. I might have a look at sevens now, I think. These digits at the bottom are one, two, five, and six in theory. Now that cannot be one or five. That can't be two. That unfortunately seems to have lots of options. So, but but let's let's look at this domino as a pair. So this is talking about the position. Oh, in fact, we know it. This is the position of seven in row four. And it's seven is in one, two, three, four, five. It's in the sixth position. That's a six. That's massive because that gives me a two. That's a one. That's a five. Good grief. Now. Now, let's try and use this to a maximum. So row six, column two now is a seven, which I don't have in the grid. That's got to go there. That seems to plonk a seven here, which I thought had to be next to a two from these pencil marks, but maybe that was wrong. I can't remember. Yeah, yes, it does, because this this is, is indexing the position of three, which is in row seven, column two. So that's why I did that. It wasn't completely in, insane. Now, seven has to be in one of those two cells in row this row here. So if this was seven, eight, that's index, indexing the position of five, row seven, column eight, that looks correct. But is that, does it have to be there? I 
think it does, doesn't it? Because aren't we saying, in effect, if you think about this in a different way, we're saying this coordinate is saying where in column 8 does the 5 go? And we know that in column 8 the 5 goes here, so I don't see how that can be a different number than being 7. So now I've got 6 7s in the grid, and my other sevens live in a little two by two at the top up here, where maybe something down here will res will will explain to me uh, which of those is. So I need a row one, row one, column seven is a seven. That's that one. So that's the seven, and that's the seven. So this seven, which is in row two, column eight, never got never gets indexed. Unless you miss out this, if you miss out this five and treat the grid as a tourist, you get a two eight. Um, let me just think about that. If that's a five, five four in this row, row five, column four, that is a four. That's weird. Um, okay. Anyway, let's go to. Uh, this, these two cells, these have got to be four. Ah, ha -ha, I know what they are. Five here, four here. That gives me a four and an eight, indexing a two, oh, which I've already got for some reason. I think a lot of this is probably done now, and I'm just going to have to find it, find my way through it. That's a three by Sudoku. That's a one. That's a five. That got me a five eight pair here, which is a cell I haven't got a digit in. That's got to be a three. So that's a six at the top. So far, I haven't get I haven't got any repeated digits. I cannot tell you how exciting that is. This has got to be a two six pair. Now, does this does this do it? This is indexing five. Yeah, yes. This is a five in the fifth row. That's got to be a two. It's indexing itself. So that means that's a six. One two and five into these squares. I'm going to look at this one where we've got an eight here. So that says it's talking about the eighth column and we're talking about the digit six, which is in the first position. So that's got to be a one, I believe. Therefore, this is a five. This is a two. These squares are a one, three pair. This square here is a six by Sudoku of all things. These squares, oh, I've got a 1 3 pair. I don't know if that's a deadly pattern or not. Hopefully, it's not because of the weirdnesses that are going on in the grid. And this is a 2 5 pair, so that's 2. That's 5. Let's just double check some of these. So, this 2 6 is telling us there is a 2 in row 2, column 6, and there is. So, that makes sense. Um, this is telling us where 1 goes, that there is a 1 in row 1, column 5. There is. There could be, if that is a 1. Is there a one in row three, column five? No, there most certainly isn't. So that is a one, which makes that a one, that a three, that a three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. I literally have no idea. I'm actually going to just take a stare at this and try and prove that, you know, I'm going to take a look at some dominoes. Three and eight here does look like it's pointing at one. Eight and four, row eight, column four. That, oh, that's, of course, the, the one we've been, we started thinking about. In this row, let's look at the one four there. That's that digit. That's fine. Five three. Row five, column three. That's that digit. Uh, that's not a real domino. Row two, column six. That's itself. Row three, column two. That's there. It does seem to work. Row one, column seven. That's there. I did that one though. Row six, column three. That's itself. Row four, column seven. That's a five. It is. I think this might be right. I don't know how I did that. Honestly, it's taken me an hour. And that, you know, if you if if you just said to me as I read the rules, it's going to take you three hours. I'd have accepted that. I'd have snatched your hand off for it, because that that's mad. I mean, Stefan, you must understand this whole indexing malarkey in a manner that is just beyond me. I do not know how you ever thought of this. I'd love to know. How do you wake up in the morning and think, I know what, I'm gonna make you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a puzzle that's just got one digit in it and it's gonna be unique with this rule set. How can you see that that's possible? I don't understand. I just don't. Um 
it's a beautiful idea though actually once you once you start the key is probably to realize that these cells have to not are not able to be indexed but even when you get that have that insight it's still not very easy because you then have to have the second question in fact it's not easy at all because then it has to occur to you okay well these can't then index into purple digits but then it's still not that easy at least it wasn't easy for me to see that they couldn't index into these purple digits where they wouldn't be part of a reflecting domino but they can't because of the column stuff I mean, it's it's so strange. I'm going to be fascinated to so well to read the comments on this. I um, let me sum up by saying Stefan Bura is a, certainly a genius. This is way way clever cleverer than it's completely absurd how clever this is. And I'm pleased I didn't stop the video because I nearly did. And I'm sorry if that was, um, if I moaned a bit at the start, but I hope you can understand why. And I hope some of you solved this and I'm going to look forward to understanding how, <laughs> maybe some of, maybe it's easier than I think it is, but I don't know. Anyway, hopefully we'll see some of you later on the stream. Bye for now. <laughs>